Hey, Tony here. Today I'm going to tell you what all I watched during the month of November. Um, my focus during the month of November was watching at least one Criterion film a day. Um, being that there was the Barnes & Noble Criterion um, sale going on, that's what I thought I would just make my focus on just watching a Criterion film every day. I do have quite a bit in the collection and there was quite a bit that I hadn't seen so I wanted to kind of dig into the collection. Um, so what I thought I would do is just kind of go over each title for each day let you know what my opinion is, maybe a brief description. Um, I will be using my Letterboxd account so you can follow along with me on the Letterboxd account. I will probably be using my magnifying glass because I'm blind as a bat and can't really see this small writing. So, um, anyways, the first watch, uh, well, um, so the items that I picked up during the month of November from the sale, I did go twice to Barnes & Noble and added items to the collection, so check out those videos if you'd like to see some of these films. I was able to see all of the films that I picked up during the November sale. So first up we have Ratcatcher. Um, I enjoyed this one. This right here was a very dark film as far as the context of the film. It is from 1999 and it is spine number 162. Um, I did enjoy it for the storytelling. It was a very sad story. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. This was the first day of November. It is about a young boy who is living in poverty with his family in this area and also the people that he's acquainted with, the, the other kids in the area. Um, it's about a young, I think a 14 year old girl who is looking for love in all the wrong places. She's trying to feel love and they kind of be, they kind of befriend each other, so it's a very interesting story. Um, definitely check it out if you've never seen it. Okay, next up, I watched the Kid Brother. This one is from 1927 and is spy number 964. So this was my first Harold Lloyd film that I have ever seen, and I really enjoyed it. Once I once I saw this one, um, I wanted to be sure to check out the other ones. I do have the other ones in the collection. Um, so they're very easy to watch. This right here was, I think, 82 minutes. But it puts me in the mind of Charlie Chaplin and also um, Buster Keaton. This right here was filmed in 1927. And of course, it is a silent film. All of the Harold Lloyd films that I've got in the collection are silent films. I don't know if he... I'm sure he's done more than just silent films. But anyway, it was very fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. If you've never checked out Harold Lloyd, this right here is a good one. I um, enjoyed the story. <clears throat> it's very interesting what they were able to accomplish back in 1927. Okay, next up is Minding the Gap. Um, this one is from 2018 and is by number 1061. It is a documentary. Um, I picked this up a few sales ago and it was just sitting on the shelf and I thought I, I wanted to check this one out. I really enjoyed it. I thought this documentary was very well done in the perspective of these skaters. Um, I'm not really big into documentaries, um, but this right here is one that's really worth checking out. Okay, next up is another Harold Lloyd film, Speedy. Um, this one is from 1928. It's 86 minutes and it's by number 788. Um, this right here was another fun one. You know, it, it, it's, it was pretty much similar to, different story of course, but similar to the other one. They're, they all have very um, similar characters in them, um, but really a good one to, to um, add to the collection. Okay, next up we have It Happened One Night. I had never seen this one before. It's got Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert in it, and it is from 1934. And it's by number 736. Um, I really enjoyed this story. This right here was a, it's a love story, but you can't tell by the way that these characters are. The more time they spend together, the more um, in love they fall. And it is about a rich girl running away from home, trying to get away from it all, trying to get away from an engagement. And this is the person who's going after her. Uh, which there is a monetary gain involved, but the story unfolds. So definitely check that one out. I really enjoyed it. 
One movie that I did not really enjoy is Picnic at Hanging Rock. This has been in the collection for a very, very long time. I never did check it out until just now, this re um, during the month. It is from 1975, spine number 29. Um, I don't know what I was expecting, but I mean, it was okay. There were some parts that were okay. The stories, I don't know, it was just too long. Nothing really exciting happened maybe up until the end, but I didn't really care much for it. It probably just needs another watch. Um, I have heard some people rave about it. That's the reason why I picked it up. Most of my Criterion Collection titles I pick up are because of people's recommendations. Okay, next up we have Summertime. Um, this right here is from 1955, spine number 22, starring Katherine Hepburn. Um, Tim Talks Talkies was really raving about this. I did pick this up during the July sale and ended up sending it back because, um, or taking it back because I had really kind of spent more than I wanted to spend. And this right here was one that I didn't really think I'd be interested in. But then Tim um, was talking about how how good it was. So I picked it up during this sale. I really wanted to check it out. I really enjoyed it. Um, Catherine Hepburn is a middle-aged woman who is um, a tourist um, just trying to get away, I guess, from her everyday life and meet someone, falls in love, and the kind of the story unfolds with that. It's kind of a weird... I don't know. It seemed like the movie really focused on the, um, the landscape of where she was. And, um, I don't know, it was just a really beautiful film. I really enjoyed it. If you really want to find out more about Summertime, definitely hit up Tim Talks Talkies. Okay, next up was another recommendation from Tim, and that is The Night of the Hunter. I had never seen this one before. It's from 1955, spine number 541. I really enjoyed it. This is a really good thriller. Um, I don't know, Robert Mitchum in this film was really... Um, menacing he is a so-called preacher and it's just a really good thriller um the, the child actors in this did a really good job it was it had some corny moments in it but overall i really in, enjoyed it this is probably one of my favorite watches during the month okay next up is bigger than life um this right here was another recommendation it is an older film. It is from 1956, spy number 507. Um, if I can remember correctly, there's this guy who um, is prescribed some kind of medicine, um, cortisone, and the effects of that medicine on his life and how it changes his life and his environment, the people around him. Um, I, I don't know. I really couldn't get into it very much. It just didn't, it wasn't very exciting, um, but it definitely deserves a rewatch. Okay, next up is another newer film from the, or a newer released film from 1997, spy number 1154, and it's Eve's Bayou. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed the story. It kept me entertained. It kept me interested in what was going on and the performances were great it does have a a young actor in it she does a great job and everybody in the film i really enjoyed watching the special features afterwards to learn more and was very surprised and if you've never checked out ease bayou definitely check that out um, this right here was a recommendation from james from 20th and 21st century films so um really good film i definitely recommend you check that one out Okay, next up we have The Naked City. Um, this right here is from 1948, spy number 380. I don't remember very much about this other than it was a narrated story in the city of New York. And there were, um, was, I guess it's about maybe the police and crime in the city. Um, but what was really interesting is that it was filmed on location in New York on the streets. So it's a really good look at that time period in New York. Um, it wasn't my favorite, but it was definitely worth the watch. Okay, next up we have Love Affair. Um, this right here is from 1939, spy number 1114. Um, and the story is a love story involving these two characters here on the front who meet on a cruise ship, I do believe. Um, but they're both involved with other people, 
and I don't know, they just kind of fall in love on the boat. And they decide that they're going to meet up at the Empire State Building um, maybe in a year. And something happens on the way to the Empire State Building that kind of changes the story a bit and it makes it a little bit more interesting. So definitely check this out if you're interested in an older love story. Okay, next up I watched Sound of Metal. Um, I really was looking forward to watching this one. This right here is from 2019. Spy number 1151. I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the performances. I enjoyed the sound design that they used to kind of put you in the place of this person. And I don't know, I, I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed this one. Um, if you've never seen Sound of, uh, Sound of Metal, definitely check it out. But great, great, great performances. Um, next up, I watched Machette. Machette. Um, I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm not very sure, but it's from 1967, 363. This right here was not one of my favorites. It's a very sad story involving this young person um, and the life that she lives with her family. They're in poverty. Her going to school, her interactions with the other students in the school. I don't know. It's just a very sad story, um, but. Definitely, if you've never seen this film, it's worth watching at least once. Um, it's probably one that I need to revisit, but it was very not a, it was not a very uplifting film. Okay, next up we have Pick Up on South Street. This right here is from 1953, spy number 224. Um, what I remember about this one is that it involves. A crime story it is a crime story with a pickpocket and I believe that the pickpocket has picked the wrong pocket and received or got something that he shouldn't have gotten maybe by mistake I can never really figure out if it was accidental that he actually picked this certain item or if he was actually after it but anyways um, a very interesting story it wasn't one of my favorites um, but it does keep you entertained and interested in what's What's to um, follow along throughout the story, so check that out. Next up, we have Brute Force. This right here is from 1947, spy number 383. Um, I don't know, I, I've had this in the collection for a while. I never watched it up until this time around, and it is a prison movie about this group of, um, I think, maybe five prisoners who are planning an escape and just the whole, I don't know, I just enjoy a prison escape movie. I don't really remember much about this one though. They all kind of blend together, but I did enjoy this one. Next up is Shaft. Um, this right here was a first time watch for me. I had never seen Shaft before. I had seen the Shaft remake here a couple of years ago. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I thought, you know, I, I just need to check this one out. I've always heard great things about it. Um, the time period, of course, it is from 1971, spine number 1130. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to enjoy it. Um, but probably it was my mindset when I was watching this one that I probably need to revisit this one. Okay, next up we have Showboat. This one is from 1936, spine number 1021. Um, this right here is a musical. I've been wanting to see this one for a long time. It's been in the collection for a while. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but it wasn't terrible. Um, the story takes place, I think it's in a five-year span, and it follows these certain people throughout the story. There are some really great musical moments in it, um, so I'm glad I have it in the collection. I do need to revisit this one also. Okay, next up we have To Sleep With Anger. This right here was from 1990 and um, has spy number 963. This one I did not enjoy as much as I thought I would. I, I do enjoy Danny Glover, um, but this story was just really slow paced. Um, it didn't really get very exciting up until maybe the end, but um, it was worth the watch. Um, I really do love the artwork on this one. That's kind of what drew, drew me to it. But I probably just need to revisit this one also. Okay, next up is Okja. 
it had been a very long time since I've seen Okja. I saw it when it was on Netflix, I believe, way back when. It is from 2017, spine number 1133. Um, I enjoyed this one. I really focused more on it this go-round than I had done back when it was first released. I enjoyed the performance of this young girl, the excitement of the chase and the running around. Um, but overall, I think it was a really entertaining film. Nothing that I would go back and visit anytime soon. Okay, next up we have Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I've had this a couple of sales ago. I purchased this. This is from 2019. Spy number 1034. I really enjoyed this one. Great story. Um, I enjoyed the aspect that it really centered on just a small group of people. There wasn't a lot of stuff going on. It was focused uh, with some really beautiful cinematography. And I, um, I just thought it was a really great, well, very well done film. If you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out. Okay, next up we have Safety Last. This is another Harold Lloyd film from 1923. Spine number 662. Another fun film. Um, Safety Last is one that um, focuses on the um, work industry. And just has a lot of great moments in it. A lot of great... Um, action pieces. Like I said before, it's very amazing what they were able to do back in the 1920s. Okay, next up was a big release. And that was WALL-E. Um, WALL-E came to Criterion. This is from 2008. Spine number 1161. It had been many, many, many years since I've seen WALL-E, so it's almost like watching this one for the very first time. Um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the animation. It was just very, um, very well done. I'm very happy to have this one in the collection. Okay, next up we have The Lady Eve. This right here is from 1941, spine number 103, starring Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck. Um, this is about this woman who is chasing after this man. Um, who is the heir of a fortune and her and her father are um, card players and I believe they're trying to con this man into some money and try to anyways it was really good the story was very entertaining it kept me um, interested in what was going on um, if you like that kind of a story where someone is after someone else's money then this is definitely one that you should check out Okay, next up is Daddy Long Legs. This is one that I've been wanting to see ever since I read up on it and found out that it was a Safety Brothers film. It's from 2009, spine number 1138. I don't know what I was expecting when I saw this. This right here was filmed almost like it was shot live as the things were happening, which it might have been. I did watch some of the special features. It involves this father who has custody of his two sons for a certain period of time so this story follows along during that time period and just what a terrible what terrible terrible choices this father makes for his sons there's a lot of things that happen during this story um, you can tell that the father of course loves his sons but doesn't always have their best interest um, he's almost self-centered wanting to do what he needs to do or wants to do um, and doesn't put his sons first. There's a lot of things that happen. Definitely check this out if you've never seen it. Okay, next up we have Arsenic and Old Lace. This right here is from 1944, spine number 1153. This is the, a, a Frank Capra film. I believe he's the one that did um, It's a Wonderful Life. It's about this family um, who is very eccentric, about two ants. The nephew, which is played by Cary Grant, and a story that unfolds. I think it was very well done, very entertaining, very zany. Um, if you have never seen this film, definitely check it out. Next up, we have The Power of the Dog. This right here is from 2021, spy number 1158. I had never really heard about this film until it came to Criterion. I do know that I believe it aired on Netflix, but for whatever reason I never came across this one. It has Benjamin Cumberbatch in it, 
It's got a really interesting story. It also has um, um, Kirsten Dunst in it. And I can't remember the young man's name, but I, I do enjoy the way that the story unfolds. It's got a very, uh, very satisfying um, conclusion. And if you've never seen this one, definitely check it out. I've heard mixed reviews from different people. Some people didn't like it. Some people did. I'm following the part of someone that liked it. I think I liked it because it is a Western film. It takes place in a beautiful area of the world um, with mountains. And anyways, I just enjoyed it. Next up, we have Buck and the Preacher. Um, this right here is from 1972. Spy number 1140. It has Sidney Poitier in it and Harry Belafonte. It, I believe, is Sidney's first directorial debut. It is a Western. It has a lot of action in it. It really, you know, it's from 1972. You can kind of really feel that when you're watching the film. Um... I enjoyed watching the special the special features afterwards. I didn't realize that Harry Belafonte um, looked a lot different than what he was in as this character. And I don't know. One thing about this film is it was a little bit too long. It did kind of go on and on and on. But it was a very entertaining film. Definitely check that one out. Next up, we have Inside Lewin Davis. This right here is a. 2013 film, spine number 794. This is another one that I had never heard of before. So someone recommended this as I was um, posting on Instagram or maybe as I was posting my pickups from Barnes & Noble. And so I picked this up because I really do um, enjoy people's recommendations. I do try to follow up with those. And if they recommend a movie, I like to watch it. And man, I'm so happy that I was able to pick this one up and watch this one. I really enjoyed the story. Um, Oscar Isaac did a great performance. It is not an uplifting story. It's a very sad story. It's draining, but very much worth the watch. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. Okay, and then lastly, the very last day of the month, I finally watched The Flight of the Phoenix. This is a recent pickup. This right here is from 1965. Spy number 1116. Speaking about long movies, this right here was a long movie. I'd never heard of this film. It stars Jimmy Stewart, James Stewart, and a cast of characters. Um, it was it was a good story as far as what was happening, but it just kind of went on and on and on more than what I thought it needed to. But I can see why. It was one of those epic movies to where... I could picture this being a really big thing in the cinema, but for whatever reason, I never heard about this one. Um, if you never checked it out, definitely check it out. Um, but it, but it, but it is long. Okay, so those are the films that I watched during the month of November. I'm not very good at describing films. I'm not very good at um, giving my point. But I did want to kind of get through this video to share what I watched. So please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the films that I watched. Um, let me know which of these films you enjoy and why you enjoy them. Also give me some recommendations of other Criterion titles that you think I should pick up. Because I really do appreciate your recommendations. If you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I really appreciate it if you could subscribe. If you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and on Twitter. And if you'd like to find out what I've been watching, you can find me over on Letterboxd. I do have links below. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.